Hello and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Waypoint. Today we're playing Unreal Tournament 99, kind of a mainstay to this series. I felt like it was an Unreal Tournament 99, kind of a day, kind of a week. Or maybe not kind of a week, that implies some weird kind of things with have I been running around giving people with instagib rifles in real life? Uh, I think the answer, safe to say, is well yeah, duh. This week I kind of went a little bit off the rails streaming World of Warcraft. If I stream today it will be my ninth stream in a row. Um, except for the fact that yesterday's stream was Pictures Without Pictures and not World of Warcraft, but nevertheless I did want to stream World of Warcraft yesterday, I just told myself that it's probably not a good idea to do two streams in one day because I'll be tired out for one of the other streams, so I decided not to do that in the end. Um, but I'm currently grappling with whether I want to stream World of Warcraft today as well because I have work later and it's a really long shift and I've recorded a weekly waypoint and that would just leave like zero downtime but I kind of want to do it anyway, so I don't really know. I haven't been trying to stream any like, kind of like, single character playthroughs or have any kind of na a narrative thread going through my streams. Literally, my streams have just been, I'm playing World of Warcraft, doing some random shit, and I'm just gonna stream while I play. Sometimes I've been leveling my hunter, who's like level 100 something. Sometimes I've been playing my main, uh, where I've been doing either current content or running old raids for uh, Transmog, or I've been running old raids for Transmog on an alt, or I've been uh, leveling like a really low level character, all that kind of stuff. I've just been all over the place with it and I'm having a whale of a time and um, I, see, I see no plans to stop anytime soon if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, there is a slight niggle in the back of my mind of like, am I worried about burning myself out before pre-patch? But I, do, I don't think that's really a problem. Um, basically, if I'm this excited, uh, or if I'm this hyped about streaming World of Warcraft right now, and I'm this excited about pre-patch and all that brings, I feel like we're at least going to get a decent amount out of pre-patch, and if not, then at least I've streamed the World of Warcraft that I want to do now. I feel absolutely no, like, hint of uh, burnout so far so that's good so basically yeah expect world of warcraft streams uh for the foreseeable future i guess i'm a wow streamer now guys i did it um no i've talked plenty in the past about how i want to be like an mmo variety streamer if you know what i mean uh so like world of warcraft uh elder scrolls online destiny 2 which does count as an mmo even the developers agree nowadays uh, <laughs> um that kind of thing Maybe some Final Fantasy XIV in there, which we have streamed before. Uh, yeah, and obviously that doesn't mean I'm not uh, that I'm not pigeonholing myself into that and saying I can only stream those things, or that I'm definitely going to be streaming all the time now. That's just where my head's at at a minute. I'm sure it'll change again in a couple of months. <laughs> you know me. But yeah, the public test realm for the pre-patch to the expansion Shadowlands uh, is available, and I haven't downloaded it or played it because I'm not huge on public test realms, even for updates I'm extremely excited for. Um, I tend to like being able to keep my progress, if you know what I mean, um, and I don't want to burn myself out on the content before it's fully finished or released for something like World of Warcraft, so I typically don't do that. Uh, but that does mean that the pre-patch is about a month away, or maybe like three weeks away at this point, because uh, it came out last week. So that's fucking exciting, um, and slightly annoying because my week off will be, if the projected timing is correct, my week off will end the second the pre-patch comes out, so that's that's annoying timing and I can't really change it either, but uh, that's okay though, I'm not going to stress about that too much, I'm just going to play when I can, stream when I can, that kind of thing, as I've been doing now. The week off during it would have been nice, but it's not necessary or you know, required or anything like that, so we good. This week I also watched season 2 of the Umbrella Academy, and if you want to hear my thoughts about that, check out the Critigree FM podcast uh, feed, which is on Spotify and uh, Anchor and nowhere else, because apparently a picture of my World of Warcraft character counts as a copyright thing, and they're not putting it on iTunes, and I'm a bit too stubborn to change, but either way, I haven't actually recorded that yet, but I do have plans to do that either today or tomorrow to record my thoughts on season 2 of the Umbrella Academy. Um, summarised though, I fucking love that show, <laughs> it's awesome. I've also started reading Mythos, a book by Stephen Fry about uh, retelling the myths of, well basically the Greek myths, and I've always been a, a person who's like, why don't they teach Greek mythology at school? That would be really interesting, that would be really fun, that would get a lot of people interested in history. And like, you know, why did they come up with these myths? And you could then spin off from there and be like, well, what was Greek, ancient Greek culture like at the time, and the wars, and all that kind of stuff. And now I'm 20 pages into Mythos, and I'm going, oh, that's why they don't teach 
Greek mythology at schools because it's fucking warped. I'm about 20 pages in and so far I've seen Deital Incest, which was kind of, I already knew that was a thing, but I've seen Deital Incest, I've seen uh, like mother and son making babies, I've seen um, I, I've seen father eating five consecutive children in a row because he's worried that they're going to grow up and kill him. Um, yeah, that's just kind of like the beginnings of it. But, oh yeah, and of course, who could forget the gelding of Uranus uh, by his son, uh, who, who, yeah, basically, it's a whole fucking thing. It's so fucked up and weird, and I'm loving every second. Also, I know this is going to sound weird, but I'm really glad that I played Assassin's Creed Odyssey before I read this book, because having heard um, English through, like, a Greek accent for so long, um, like, I've played, like, 90 hours of that game, it gives me an idea of how I'm supposed to be pronouncing these names, whereas before I would have definitely had trouble doing so, like, Oronos. They do it phonetically in the book for people who don't know, but if I, uh, if I didn't know how that was pronounced, I'd probably have read it, like, or Oranius or something, like, you know? It's nice to have a feel for the Greek pronunciations with names and stuff. And also, as I'm reading those Greek pronunciations, I'm reminded once again of just what an ace fucking character Cassandra is. Ah, oh, what a game! What a character. Ah, uh, she should have been the main character, the only choosable one. And they came out with that. This this is like a month or two old news now, but they came out saying that basically the reason Alexios was a choosable character in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is because they were worried it wouldn't sell with a purely female protagonist. Get off your bullshit, Ubisoft. Be the change in the industry you want to see. Although that being said, having Alexios as a choosable character isn't necessarily a bad thing if it's what players identify as. Like, they, they identify better with a male character, it's just that the fact that it wasn't the initial plan is what really rubs me the wrong way, you know? Um, like, you play that game and you can tell Alexios wasn't meant to be a protagonist. Oh boy, I went off on a tangent there, didn't I? In other gaming news, and um, you know, what other news am I going to talk about on this video, uh, there's a Linkin Park DLC for Beat Saber now, and I know that on PC you can just download user-made, like, song, like, rhythm shit, uh, but on PS4 you cannot, and I am sorely tempted by the Linkin Park DLC. I don't like that it's £12, I'd like it to be a little bit cheaper, uh, but it did make me bust out the PSVR again and play Beat Saber in the hopes that there would be a free song. There's usually a free song in these packs, but for this one there was not. But oh my god, it looks so good, it's got all the best songs on it, and I want it, I want it, I want to be a Jedi uh, who frickin' dances to Linkin Park, you know? That's, that's my dream, that's all I've ever wanted in life. So come payday, I may pick that up, and you may see some fun clips of me uh, fucking failing at Beat Saber. There is already a clip because I was just playing the regular old levels that are already there of the choices of songs they have, and I was I was in the middle of a of a song, and my left uh, what's it called PlayStation Move controller died, and so one of my lightsabers just disappeared, and I was like, what, what? <laughs> it was it was a weird feeling just to have something in your hand vanish. Not gonna lie, but yeah, that's that. This is Unreal Tournament 99, as I've already mentioned, and it dawned on me because it's come out that they are remaking a 20-year-old game, and I don't remember which game it is. Give me a second. Oh, obviously the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 is 20 years old, and I was looking at that remake because the demo came out. By the way, that's another game I really fucking want, um, <laughs> but that one's £40, uh, so I'm gonna have to think long and hard on that one. Uh, but yeah, I was looking at that and like how it's essentially the same gameplay, it's just new graphics. And I was like, you know what would be really fucking nice? Is if Unreal Tournament got that treatment. If this game got like new graphics and everything to make it look really nice and modern and cool. Uh, but it was literally the same gameplay underneath, the same level. I mean, they can make new levels for it, but it's just something to revitalize the arena shooter uh, multiplayer community as well. Uh, nice updates out there. And I know they did the whole uh, reboot thing with Unreal Tournament, but then Fortnite kicked off and they stole all those developers and it's just in development purgatory now. They've decided that they're not going to keep making it, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, what I would like, um, I mean I would like to see them return to that, um, but I feel like it's been so long now they probably wouldn't. What I would like is for them to just come back to Unreal Tournament 99 and give it a facelift and re-release it and make a big deal out of it. Um, they can even add cosmetic progression if they want. I'm not opposed to that if they need to monetize it in some way. I might not latch onto it, but um, I mean, look at what Halo's doing. And I mean, to be fair, their battle passes are free, but Halo's doing it quite successfully in the Master Chief collection. I very much like the changes they've made to Halo 1 uh, with the new cosmetic stuff, and I like how crucially you can toggle that shit off so you don't have to see it if you're a purist. Um, I'm not, but I think it 
it got rid of a lot of complaints that would otherwise have been made. But yeah, I would just like to see that treatment given to this specific game. Uh, and maybe 2004 and 3 as well, make it a collection, why not? I think that would be really cool. But it's never going to happen, is it? <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.